Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to uh, update everyone on the current status of the Saskatchewan Safe School Plan. As we continue our preparations to welcome students and staff back into classrooms on September the 8th, parents and caregivers will now have access to detailed information of their school's uh, local plan. As previously announced, all school divisions will post online and communicate to parents and students these details no later than the end of school, end of the day today. Copies of each specific school plan will be made available through their respective school division websites. These plans may be updated or refined as students and staff return to school. Further information regarding testing for the education sector, including reporting and notification, will be distributed to parents tomorrow. The Government of Canada, as you know, has announced that school divisions across the province will have access to additional funding as Saskatchewan is set to receive $74.9 million as a result of new the new spending commitment by the Government of Canada. This funding will be added to the $40 million in new education funding already committed by the province from the COVID Contingency Fund and is in addition to the $40 million in funds available to, through school division savings. While application intakes will continue throughout the school year, the first intake closes at the end of the day tomorrow. As we work with our sector partners to ensure a safe return to school, we know that there will be increased costs associated with staffing, preparation and supplies. With the federal government's contribution, there is now up to $150 million available to our education sector for costs associated with a safe return to school. Now earlier this summer, the Ministry of Education centrally procured 6 million masks to distribute to school divisions to make available on a daily and an ongoing basis. The first shipment of those masks has been delivered to all 27 school divisions and is in addition to the full face shields the province obtained which will be made available to all staff. The second shipment of masks is set to leave the supplier today and will be delivered to school divisions during the first week of school. Our government continues to monitor the transmission of COVID-19 in the province and updates will be made to the safe school plan as necessary based on the advice of the Chief Medical Health Officer. So thanks for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, well, we uh, we're hoping that the federal government would uh, would support our safe schools plan as they have helped support a number of other sectors in the economy. Um, so yesterday's announcement and the conversations that the prime minister has had with the premier as head of the uh, as head of council of federation uh, was a welcome surprise from the federal government. Certainly, it's going to be very helpful in helping to address uh, some of the concerns that have been addressed in terms of ensuring, uh, continuing to ensure that there is a safe return to school. So far, we've only had two applications, but as I say, the first intake uh, is due at the end of uh, end of uh, day tomorrow. We're expecting a significant number of uh, of applications to be made for the funding that's been made available. Any issues with going to the applications? I haven't reviewed any of the applications. They'll be reviewed by the Ministry of Education. Certainly, the priority will be to ensure safe return to school on day one. So priority is going to be given to things like immunocompromised students, making sure that we have uh, enough resources for online learning, supplies, those kinds of things. So really the immediate needs on day one will be the priority of the funding and we'll uh, look at those applications uh, start once they're, once they're all, uh, all compiled. When did the application window open? Well, it opened about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, when we first announced the $40 million that was going to be reserved from the contingency fund. So the reason uh, that we want the applications in by tomorrow is that we want to make sure that school divisions have the resources that they need on day one uh, to make sure that there is a safe return uh, of our kids and our teachers into the classroom. So that's the reason why the deadline is, is tomorrow for the first intake. There'll be another intake uh, coming up in, uh, in about a month and a half and then on a quarterly basis. It's a possibility. Certainly, staffing is one of the uh, is one of the criteria that we're putting forward. As I mentioned before, the priority will certainly be on ensuring uh, that school divisions have the resources on day one. Um, one of the requirements of the federal government is that we report to the federal government uh, in December 
the, the initial uh, advance from the federal government is a billion dollars, and that with a further billion dollars uh, to be to come to the provinces, of course, uh, in January. And so we're required to report to the federal government on the use of the money that's uh, being put forward. And so the priorities, of course, will be around, uh, as I mentioned, ensuring that. Uh, uh, there's a safe return on day one, but looking at staffing, looking at supplies, looking at those kinds of things to make sure that school divisions have the resources that they need. Is there providing with any recommendations as well? No, what the federal government has said to us is they want to make sure that their staff and uh, PPE and supplies are available. They certainly uh, continue to, uh, to support the province's position and safe return to school. So, uh, while we are going to be emphasizing, at least on in the initial intake, the what's required to have a safe uh, start on day one, um, we'll be looking at those applications to make sure that the school divisions have the resources that they need. And so then we will be reporting, as I mentioned, to the federal government on the use of, of the money that's being distributed. Uh, the application, uh, the funding from the federal government actually comes in, a, in a, at a good time for us simply from the perspective that we put an application process together. Uh, so this additional money will be uh, will supplement the money that's already been put into the plan for distribution under that application process. When it comes to both the forty million dollar pot and previously and this new seventy five million dollar pot, will school divisions have to burn through their existing reserves first before they're eligible for any of this new money? Well, what we're asking school divisions to do is they've had uh, forty million dollars worth of savings that since we uh, since in class. Uh, learning was suspended. We're expecting that they will use those resources. Certainly that's not an impediment to making the application, but we want to make sure that those resources are utilized as well for a safe return for both students and teachers. Will you deny any applications? Well, we'll have to look at what the applications are. Certainly we want to prioritize those, as I've mentioned before, to make sure that, uh, that uh, the priority is on ensuring a safe return on day one. So. Issues like supplies and staffing will be a priority. Immunocompromised children will be a priority. Ensuring that there's sufficient resources for online learning will be, be a priority for us. So um, we're certainly not uh, going into this with the intention of denying any funding, but we are going to be looking at it to make sure that, uh, uh, that the priorities uh, that are uh, set out will be met by those applications. Well, we're very we're interested. We've reviewed all the plans of the school divisions. We're comfortable with all the plans that the school divisions have put in place based on the guidelines that the, that the provincial government had set out some time ago. Those plans have been reviewed uh, by not only uh, by the response planning team made up of the STF, uh, the SSBA, uh, public health, and uh, and the ministry and others. And so we're quite comfortable with the plans. Certainly, there's just a new reality when it comes to children returning to school this fall and making sure that protocols and procedures are in place to safely educate our children is our top priority. So we know that there will be uh, some challenges. We also know that this is kind of an evolving situation and so as things develop, as things move forward, you can see some changes, I believe, in terms of how that programming is going to be delivered. So the overall amount of money, is there a plan in place, a structure, what will go where, or that's kind of developing as it goes forward? No, it'll be all based on applications, as I mentioned. The first intake for those applications is tomorrow. Uh, to ensure that on day one there is a safe return and that school divisions have the supplies that they need. Uh, we want to make sure there's an equitable distribution of those funds between all school divisions because all school divisions will have some of the same basic needs around PPE, around staffing, around uh, supplies and things to make sure that schools are clean and that they're safe. And so um, to that extent we'll, we'll be reviewing those applications to make sure that those, uh, those results are met. There's 27 school divisions? There's 27 school divisions, that's correct. Well, we know that there's a number of school divisions that have already been paying, paying some attention to this. After we suspended in-class learning back in March, a number of school divisions started paying uh, more attention to ensuring that they have the resources available. Certainly uh, around immunocompromised kids, they're going to want to make sure and parents are going to want to make sure that they have access to those resources. Uh, so I know school divisions have been paying some attention to this. And certainly almost every school division in the province provides some form of uh, of distance learning and so part of the application process will be to ensure that we're supporting uh, those uh, those school divisions in being able to provide that uh, the resources that they need for their students. Only the two applications so far it's kind of surprising though I mean I would have thought all 27 school boards would be at your front door 
application in hand, what do you think the chance of a low take up? Well, we're very much we're very much expecting uh, uh, an influx of applications tomorrow from school divisions. We know that. Uh, a number of school divisions were looking to make sure that they had their applications in, so we're expecting an influx tomorrow. I'm not surprised that there's only two, given the timing of the request for applications was only a short period of time ago since the Premier had announced the $40 million um, dedication from the $200 million contingency fund. So I know school divisions, once that was, uh, um, once, once, once the Premier had announced that, uh, that short time ago that school divisions were starting to prepare their applications, so we're very much expecting a number of applications to land in the Ministry of Education tomorrow. Doesn't a lot of these advice from like lesser schools to the like Premier, I'm sure you'd rather not be hearing this right now. Do you regret anything about the opening school plan? No, you know, I think we have one of the best uh, school opening plans in the country, and I think it's a mistake to think that this planning has just happened over the last couple of weeks. Once we suspended in-class learning between the Ministry of Education uh, and the response planning team uh, and others, including public health. There's been a, a, a dedicated effort to make sure that we have a good back-to-school plan. And so having the school divisions do their work, uh, making sure that they have their plans in place, because certainly they're, they're, most, uh, they're most efficient in determining what the needs of their individual schools are. Certainly every school division is different and every school is different. And Every classroom is different. So I'm very comfortable with the plan that's been put together. I think the school divisions have done just an excellent job of making sure that, uh, that those uh, plans are, are good plans, that our children and our teachers are going to be safe. And those plans uh, all have to be communicated now to uh, parents by the end of the day today. So parents will have an idea in terms of what's expected of their children, in terms of their, their learning experiences next year. So as I said, I think this is the best back to school plan in the country and uh, I'm very very pleased with the work not only that the ministry has done uh, in consultation with public health but very much impressed with the work that the uh, school boards have done in consultation with the response planning team. What specifically do you think does make it the best in the country? Like give one specific example of why you think that is. Well I think we have a good uh, a good set of levels in terms of how you move from one level to another. Uh, and we have four levels as you all know and I won't repeat what those levels are, but certainly let, letting uh, school divisions make the determination as to how they move between levels based on advice from public health, I think is, a, is, a, is, an, excellent, is an excellent tool in, sh in terms of ensuring that our students are safe. And so um, the work that's been done, not just in conjunction with school divisions, but particularly with the guidance of, pu of public health, has I think made the plans uh, very, very good. Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think the plans are there in place to make sure that children are as safe as possible. Certainly, the additional money from the federal government is going to allow school divisions on application to enhance a number of measures that they might not have otherwise done. So I don't believe that uh, the school plans would have, been, would have changed as a result of that. Certainly, having the ability to provide the additional resources will be good for school divisions, but it's uh, not my belief that they would have changed their plans based on the additional funding. Certainly, ensuring that School divisions have the resources and the staffing to provide a safe return to school is, is the priority, and I think that that's clearly expressed in the plans that have been filed. Can you expect that this is, you know, a framework that you think is one of the best in the country? Are you working with other provinces to collaborate with the province in particular that you know, you've got something you like that, you think it can copy it? What can you tell us? Well, there's certainly been a lot of collaboration among ministries and among ministers across the country to make sure we all have the same goal. We want our teachers and we want our students to be safe in classrooms. I can tell you that there's been a significant amount of collaboration with public health officials, not just within the province, but between provinces to look to see what best practices are. Uh, I think our plan is, is unique in a, couple of, in a couple of ways, but really there's a lot of similarities between plans across the country. Um, we didn't really look at any one particular province and cherry pick anything that they had done. I know a lot of provinces paid attention to our plan though, but I think the fact that there was a, the significant consultation that we've had with our education partners, particularly the trustees and the teachers, uh, make our plan, I think, fairly unique. Thanks, everyone. Super good. Good. Thanks very much, everyone.